In 1985, an arsonist poured gasoline down the aisles of St. Francis of Assisi Church in Concord and set the church on fire and burned it down. The pastor at the time was famous pastor of the Diocese of Oakland, now deceased. His name was Monsignor Varney. And he and his parish rebuilt the church and it was rededicated in 1991. And when they rededicated the church, they put in some new statues. One of the statues was of St. Joseph. And after the statue of St. Joseph was put in the church, one of the parishioners complained, Monsignor, it doesn't look like St. Joseph. Monsignor, who is famous for his quip, said, Well, when you bring me a photograph of what St. Joseph really looked like, I'll change it. So, do you notice how we here are from many countries, continents, many different parts of the world? And when we carry our statues of Jesus, our images of Mary, pictures, you know, our paintings of St. Joseph, they're all a little bit different, right? You say, well, how can that be? Jesus, Mary, and Joseph were Jews who lived in Palestine 2,000 years ago. Well, this is how we have the right to have pictures of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph that reflect our cultures and countries. It's because when God created the world, he said, it's all good. But then the world rebelled when Adam and Eve sinned and humanity fell. But then the goodness was restored at the moment of the incarnation when Mary said yes and immediately conceived Jesus in her by the Holy Spirit. The whole human race became better than it was before at the creation. It became divine. And that's why we say every country, every nation, or as it says in the scripture, every tribe and tongue and people and nation needs to hear the word of God and be baptized and welcome the incarnation of Jesus into their country, into their midst that immediately raises it on high. Today, in a special way, we're honoring Mary under the title, Our Lady Undoer of Knots. Now, to tell you the truth, I never heard of this title of Mary. I've heard of many other titles of Mary, like in Mexico, Our Lady of Guadalupe, in Vietnam, Our Lady of Milan, in Brazil and South America, Our Lady of Aracida. Oh, we. But I have never heard of Our Lady, a doer of knots. And the reason really all of us know about that today, primarily, is because of Pope Francis. Everybody's favorite Pope, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the country, the whole world. Because when Pope Francis was a priest, a Jesuit priest, he was sent by his superiors after his ordination to do further studies in Germany. So from Argentina, he went to Europe, he went to Germany, and there he was working in a church in Bavaria, and he saw this painting of Mary, undoer of the knots, undoing a ribbon. And what that means and where he got it is that in this parish in Germany, about 500 years ago, a priest had the image painted in order to help married couples who were having trouble in their marriage. Because as part of the Catholic marriage ceremony in Germany, it's a cultural custom in Germany, that when the couple get married, the priest takes a white ribbon and ties the couple's hands together so that they, with their first steps in marriage, they walk together.
tied together with a white ribbon. And sometimes in marriages, knots get put into the relationship or different problems come up. And so this painting shows Mary, by undoing the knots, she's undoing the problems that come up in a marriage relationship. Okay, that's the symbolism. And so just as Jesus, we have images of him, and Joseph, so also Mary. Why was the Pope so attracted to this? Well, one, because he dealt a lot with a lot of people, couples who had problems in their marriage. And he said, this is the perfect image. But he also, coming from his Jesuit background, you know, he, he just didn't become like Pope overnight. He was, for years and years, a Jesuit priest. And one of the jobs he was given in the Jesuits was to be master of novices. And that meant that he trained the young men who entered the order in their first two years. And he gave them a 30-day silent retreat. And in the meditations that St. Ignatius Loyola said you're to pray over it for 30 days of silence. 30 days of silence. Was to pray to Mary and say to Mary, place me with your son. Place me with your son, Mary. That is Pope Francis's primordial devotion to the Blessed Mother as taught to him by St. Ignatius of Loyola, and as he in turn taught all the young Jesuits put in his care. Place me with your son. That is the message that we get from the Gospel today, the wedding feast of King. When the wine ran out, and the people went to Mary and said, you know, they've run out of wine. It'd be very embarrassing. And Mary goes to Jesus and then tells the leaders, do whatever he tells you. So maybe we can hear that today. Mary telling each and every one of us, do whatever Jesus tells you. And if you have a problem, whether it's in your family or in your personal life or with your relationships, Entrust that to Mary, the undoer of the lies. And this is Pope Francis's prayer. So take a minute, think of what your problem is you want to ask Mary for. I'm going to think of mine right now. And here's Pope Francis's prayer to this Mary. Holy Mary, full of God's presence during the days of your life, you accepted with full humility the Father's will, and the devil was never able to tie you around with his confusion. Once with your Son you interceded for our difficulties, and full of kindness and patience, you gave us an example of how to unite and tie the knots of our by remaining forever her mother, you put in order and make more clear the ties that link us to the Lord. Holy Mother, Mother of God, and our Mother, who untie with a motherly heart the knots of our faith, we pray to you to receive in your hands. Now think of the people you want to pray for. and to free them of the knots and confusion with which our enemy attacks. Through your grace, your intercession, and your example, deliver us from all evil, our Lady, and untie the knots that prevent us from being united with God, so that we, free from sin and error, may find Him in all things, may have our hearts placed in Him, and may serve him always in our brothers and sisters. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.